Well, hello, Skyscraper Directors. Um, this is your New Year's strategy session. And so how this transpired is Alden was having a brainstorm when she was in the delivery room for 48 hours and um, was writing out her strategy for this new Mary Kay year. And so as we were discussing it, as she's breastfeeding and taking care of baby steel, I went, you know what, after we like discuss yours, let's go back through and rediscuss it, discuss it because this is um, how you develop a strategy for the new year. And so I want, instead of us setting up a Zoom over a holiday, um, I know some of you right now want to listen to this right now, because basically you're just wrapping up the end of your seminar year and you need to get into momentum July 1st for your new year. Others of you are full-blown beast um, mode. And so you can't think about anything else other than what has to get on the computer by Friday night. And that's fine. Save it. Stop this right now and save it. And you listen to this on July 1st. And so um, I love this idea because honestly, I would never waited for Debbie Moore to do a meeting because I never saw her until I went to seminar. And Daylene White definitely wasn't doing any strategy sessions or conversations when she was my national. And so I always figured out what I needed to do to get the year that I wanted to have, whether it was going, I was ending a great year and I wanted to progress from that, or it was ending a valley year where there were lessons and I needed to progress from that. And so this is a successful leader strategy always to be ending and beginning at the same time. And so I'm just going to ask Alden to share her New Year's brainstorming session that she had with herself um, at the hospital, what she shared with me. And then I'm going to ask her questions. And what I'd like you to do is take notes. Then if you haven't taken the time to figure out what your strategy is, I would like you to do that. And then, then you can share your strategy with me and I can help customize it for you like I just did with Alden. Um, if you are listening to this and you are not a skyscraper director, that's absolutely fine. What I'm going to ask you to do is find a couple other Mary Kay National Area directors and you strategize together. Also, too, um, there's going to be a couple promotions that I talk about for skyscraper area. And so, again, if you're Mary Kay National Area directors, you could always easily duplicate that for your units if you'd like to. Okay, so... Alden, share with me your brainstorming session and we're just gonna roll from there. Okay, so really what spurred it on, I was in the hospital and it was late at night and I just needed something to do. Um, <laughs> but I was thinking about, I just took it in my notes, you know, on my phone. And I do that a lot. Like if I have an idea, it has to go in on my notes in my phone. Otherwise I will forget it almost immediately and it will be gone forever. So I, you know, just opened up my notes and tried to think of what things have I done well and shall I keep redoing them and what things need help, what things need to be tweaked, what things didn't go well in this past, you know, six months, 12 months, or what things aren't serving me that, you know, can be tweaked to really, you know, double, triple, quadruple what my unit has done up until this point. So it was really figuring out first, what have I done well? What am I keeping in place? And keep, you know, keeping those systems solid. Not, oh my gosh, I'm starting everything from scratch. I'm burning everything down and rebuilding. Not the case. But also, too, knowing that these are systems and they're not, you know, what is going to, you know, they're not making up the difference of what didn't happen last year or the year previous. It's a numbers game, right? So I unemotionally looked at, you know, how I, you know, feel that I'm ending and what I want to be celebrating next year on a, you know, very business mindset, knowing that these systems are the foundation. And the only thing that's going to change the results from this past year to the next year is going to be the numbers of people that myself and my unit are in front of. So, you know, having that realization, I think, and a very unemotional realization of that. And also too, I think something that 
I've, you know, noticed in the past year or so is that I can, I can very open-mindedly look at our business as a business because I have from the beginning and know that all businesses have cycles. So there are always going to be some up years, some great years, some down years, some years that you're like, what the heck even happened? Some, I don't know, years, but that's normal because it's a business. And if you're in it for the long game, that is what it is. So figuring out how to lessen, so maybe the drops aren't so large or the heights aren't so high at sometimes, and it's more even keeled because if you're doing this as a business, you need to pay bills with it, right? Um, so I think that too is having a little bit of a come to Jesus moment with yourself about the numbers game of things too. But having the systems in place is key. And I can tell you guys, I have been so thankful that I've had solid systems in place so that when I've been out of the game, like hospital out of the game, having a baby out of the game, that my systems have served me very well. There hasn't been a drop. My people have not felt neglected. Systems have, you know, taken care of that. So I'm thankful that I chose to take the time to get them in place. And now it's just tweaking them. Um, so that's kind of how this all started. And I looked at the things that I focused on when we had our best year. And so it's time to bring that back. So I, I knew what they were because I looked at it 24 seven and it's all I talked about. And that was my five focuses because you can't focus on everything, right? So if you have five focuses, um, you know, some, some might have less, some might have more, but mine were five. And I focused on the pearls of sharing 600s, stars, reds, cars, slash DIQs. So therefore I knew what I was focusing on and then all of my systems were in place to feed into all those five focus areas. So I knew what the target was and then I had to figure out what systems I could put in place to you know, essentially throw the numbers into. So that's really how I started it. And then I did, I had them, um, you know, typed out in my notes. And then I, you know, one of the days that we were just, you know, thriving, <laughs> figuring things out here, I said, can I, can I walk through these with you? And you can tell me like, yes, that makes sense. No, that doesn't make sense. Or, you know, let's tweak this a little bit or whatever it is to have somebody that's gone through it help me. Um, it was really helpful because it was just really fine tweaks and talking through like how I came to that conclusion or, you know, why I made those choices. And some of them, it was like, well, yeah, I guess that was really stupid. I shouldn't be doing that. Or that doesn't make sense. I'm doing, you know, there's multiple things that I'm doing that all create the same goal. Why am I doing those multiple things or whatever it might be? Um, so that's kind of how it all started. And that's going to be different for everyone because it's going to be based on Honestly, though, I'm not sure that the focus of five would be different for anyone because pearls, 600, stars, reds, cars, DIQs, that's pretty basic. I, unless you're at a point that you have, you know, 10 first line and eight second line and you're getting ready to go into NIQ, um, that would be the only person, which we don't have that person yet. Um, that wouldn't have these five as their focus. This is assuming also too that, I mean, we're assuming that the director is doing Queen's Court of Sales, assuming that because you have to do Queen's Court of Sales to pay all your business expenses um, with your Mary Kay sales and assuming that a director is doing court of recruiting because if a director, if her focus is Queen's Court of Sales and recruiting, but she's not doing these things, she doesn't have unit growth. It's just her own self growing. If she has these things going, but she's not doing those two, you don't have any new blood. Key people coming in from the director coming in. So your, your boat is always going in a circle. It's always going in a circle. You, maybe you bring a superstar in and she does something, but it's not sustainable because you aren't doing the Queen's Court of Recruiting. And then the Queen's Court of Sales is what make sure that all your business expenses are paid by cash flow um, so that your director's check and your recruiting check and bonuses is your family's income. And so that is an assumption 
too that you got to get your head around because I see directors either focusing on their own personal business or their unit stuff. And it's both. It's not one or the other. It's like, you know, focusing on production or building people up the career path. It's both recruiting or selling. It's both. These are all and situations. So that's a point to evaluate yourself there too. How are you doing with the and? Are you tracking yourself um, if you're not doing court of sales and recruiting right now, wrapping it up and congratulating yourself on stage in Dallas with a new piece of jewelry or a bumblebee or gift card, whatever you pick, then right there, it's not like, okay, I'll do that. And then I'll do the pearls, the 600s, the stars, the reds, the cars and DIQs. No, that definitely starts right now, 10 party week before you get to Dallas, um, you're on target for Queens Court of Sales and recruiting off the bat. So we are playing strong from the front end and you're gonna see um, on July 1st, an area promotion in July from me for our national area, for those in our area who are on target officially to qualified, not agreements, no one gets paid on agreements, to qualified. Also um, the what 1677 wholesale to be on target for port of sales. Um, so everyone, directors and consultants to do that are gonna get a gift from me. They do both. They get a pick from two gifts and you're gonna see those gifts at seminar. They're very cool. They're custom designed just for our area. Um, so your job as a director then would be to reward Princess Court on target in July. Um, and then obviously the company does the 600. So you don't need to do anything as far as gifting for that. Okay. So with the pearls, with the stars, red 600s, those are some of the new consultant things. So share with them, you know, one of the systems that a director um, often needs to reevaluate is where, how am I doing launching new people? So what tweaks are you making heading into this new year to launch new people better? Because obviously growth comes from more new people. So if what you are doing now is not going to grow with you for the unit growth that you desired, then that's a system that you're going to want to look at prior to this growth um, coming in July. So I knew that I needed to, I need to make a new inventory video that's me. I think it's really key that it's you versus attaching a video of somebody else explaining inventory or whatever it is, because you are their business mentor. So I think that's important and a welcome video that's also you, so me. So I know that I need to a lot of time, look cute, make those videos short, sweet, because there's going to be times that maybe I can't have all of those conversations and they deserve to get all of that information in a very timely manner because there's bonuses on the line, right? So those um, were things that I needed, I already had, but they need to be updated. They need to be a little bit more fresh um, and relevant and, you know, all the things. So those videos, um, and I have a new consultant welcome packet I've had since I became a director from Dawn. I've tweaked it for myself, kept it really basic, but um, I have that. So that's what I go through with new consultants. And I have just recently over the past couple of months, um, knowing that, you know, the new year was coming and I wanted to make sure that my onboarding of new consultants was very tight, but also there's a difference between, you know, having new consultants and we all know we can have conversations with them and they're just not really doing much or whatever. We know how that goes, but then there's the ones that we know they're coming in with inventory. They're listening to us. They're doing all of those things. I, um, always email my welcome packet and tell them to print it out, but you know how that goes. So I have my assistant lined up. We already had the envelopes made, all the things done and in place, she got prints of all of my welcome packet information and the consultants that I know are doing things are gonna get my printed in color, very professional looking welcome packet so they can physically be writing stuff down to track their pearls, to track their perfect and power starts, to, you know, have the business tracking registrar. So their money management's on point from the beginning, like a business, all of those main things, the weekly plan sheets. So they're printed out. So we're going back to old school because what I've found in, you know, this COVID time and the transition of more virtual stuff is that 
it's very much out of sight, out of mind. And if people aren't physically writing stuff down, it's really easy to think you're doing a whole bunch of stuff and not. But also it's a lot, it's, there's more to track. There's more avenues of things to track. There's just simply more to track. And, you know, Mary Kay said it herself about writing things down. So that's why I chose to, you know, get that system in place. So my assistant will send those physically to people that I know are doing things so that they have that place. And then I saw that I needed to be able to get new consultants, having people in front of me, you know, as soon as possible. So having a, you know, short, concise, quick goal right off the bat. And obviously with the virtual world, this is exciting. The great part of it is that we can do things like this very quickly. And I have in place that I do weekly skincare classes in, you know, a private group for my unit. And so their first goal is going to be to have 10 people on that in their, you know, first week. So they're plugging people into that. And then I'm just going to give them the Mary Kay card decal that we can all order on InTouch as a nice gift. So it helps them with advertisement, easy to ship, and it gives them a really short quick goal to get right off the bat and it gets them, you know, inviting people sharing. And there's people that, you know, they'll start going off and doing, you know, their own stuff right away, but there's people that will not. So this kind of fills in that gap that kind of kickstarts those people that are a little slower to the role, um, but it doesn't, you know, hinder the people that are just going to go quick and do their own thing anyways. So it kind of gets people rolling swifter on that. And it's just, a, again, a system in place that you know, I can text my assistant and say, hey, send this to so-and-so, send this to so-and-so. And it's all, you know, automated essentially. Um, and it helps me track, you know, who's willing to get people in the game because Dawn wasn't doing anything for me. <laughs> but if she was, I would have plugged people into it right away, right from the beginning. So um, that's kind of the tweaks that I'm making, which isn't, you know, isn't much. Um, and once those, you know, videos are made, they're going to be used for the whole entire year. So really, well, I like the, what I did do is I was at the studio. <laughs> I was at the studio yep. one to four times a week. Yep. And so you were bringing guests to a weekly success meeting every single week. So you're offering your people the same thing. It's just, yeah, virtual. Um, also to the 10 people in front right away. I think that's smart. Um, the boot camp, one of our um, adopted directors put the QR L codes of all my boot camp. So you can include that in with your training packet and that sends your people straight to boot camp on YouTube, which I love. I love that Gail Marchand did that for us because I've had, you know, Lots of go give directors build trip units, million dollar units with our boot camp training. And so it just makes sense that we're doing that with our area. Also, to playing by the rules of the game, a training packet is something I came up with as a brand new director. And so, unless you've grown from 450, 500 to trip for the rest of your career as a director, I highly recommend that you use that system because it's worked well for me having a few new people to 40 new people a month. And um, like Alden said, the people who then have conversations with you, you can mail it to them, but she's not doing that. An assistant. Now I love, you can have an assistant just text her and say, this needs to be mailed to so-and-so. This needs to be mailed. To, this needs to be sent to so-and-so. They can print it off, put them together. It's all set. Um, I have heard people tell me they stopped doing training packs because people weren't doing it. Well, if that is the business philosophy we went by, you guys should have, <laughs> we're dead. Like Mary Kay would have been dead, you know, 59 years ago because we don't do what we do for the people who don't do it. We do it for the people who do. And so I have had people, I mean, Debbie Moore went through, it was the new consultant guide that was in the starter kit and I used that. And so then I used a training packet after that. Um, so people would have a railroad track to run on and there's more now to be distracted by than there was back then. And so the railroad track is even more important. And if people aren't willing to make use of that, that's a willingness issue on their part. That tells you who to invest time into, not change your system to support the people who aren't willing to work and aren't willing to be coachable. So where are you at with the new consultant training packet? 
Where's your systems at for other people? Your assistant, virtual assistants have multiple people. I like multiple people because then if one person has a significant life situation or emergency going on, my business isn't hampered because of that one person. That's fine. I can shift you know, that piece that she does, but this is something to evaluate. Um, with your videos that you do, I'm gonna highly recommend the conversations that you have repeatedly, you get them on YouTube and you start curating your own YouTube channel um, because it's not safe to have it all on Facebook. I know two people right now that their whole Facebook, all their groups are on Recoverable and all their training videos that they had on them. And one is a inner circle national and one is a Cadillac sales director. And you don't want to be in that situation. So let's be smart. Let's get the things that you don't want to lose um, on YouTube versus just your Facebook unit groups um, so that if anything ever happened to it, again, you know, we're in a win-win situation. Your business is a hamper. Okay, next. So we talked about, you went over your training and then events because training and events are different. So share with them what your strategy is on that and why. So I looked at, you know, what, um, what do I need to do to be in front of my people for, you know, training them? Um, and then what events do I need to have in place so that again, you know, we've got guest events going on, just like we did in person, like we will have in person, but also virtually. Um, so for training events, um, I, did, I have what I call a million dollar mingle. And previously I just did that for people that were, you know, the 600 and above achievers from the month before. But what I realized is I was getting some of my great trip friends to do training and it was a really small amount of my unit that was on these, you know, great Zooms. And, you know, I wasn't going to record them and then send them to, you know, people that didn't qualify for them. That would be bad. So I realized that if I'm going to, you know, utilize those relationships and the amazing training that it needs to be for my entire unit, but I still wanted, because again, I'm really tracking those 600s and people that are doing higher level amounts of stuff. I, you know, still want something special for them. So once a month I am doing a, I call it a million dollar mingle and it's going to be everybody from the unit is invited, but then there's going to be an after party. That's, I'm calling it an after party, um, that the people that do 600 and above from the month of four are going to, you know, have special extra time so that it, you know, recognizes that, gives them a reward for that. And then also on my million dollar mingle is where I'm going to have shout outs for the, you know, achievements from the previous month for the things that I'm looking for, which obviously is 600 medalist really focusing on people that are recruiting medalists, um, you know, recognizing people from the beginning that are officially on target for the princess court and queen's court of cells. So that's a monthly let's get on target and stay on target kind of thing versus let's play a ton of catch up at the end of the year. So trying to build that rhythm in place as well um, is something that, you know, I'm really going to be focusing on. And then for our national area, I had on my note page, you know, what am I going to do for, you know, regular training for all consultants? What am I going to do for people for 600s? And what am I going to do for people for recruiting grads? What am I going to do for that? And then all of a sudden Dawn posted for us for July to December, we have special red events that are going to be put on by um, nationals and that checked that right off the list. There is no reason for me to be doing any special other red or recruiting training focus thing when I have nationals that are putting it on a platter for me and they're already scheduled out for the six month time frame. So I could check that off my list and I have our area red event and that's solely focused on team building. And it's, you know, they have to get invited back. So they have to continue. So it's not, you know, just a stagnant red situation. So that is what I have set for my um, training as of now. So the red event, you guys have the flyer for that. So you have the date, you can save it. Um, a national sales director, Janice Trude is organizing it and there'll be new directors. So I think three new directors maybe each time that are vetted. Um, I trust Janice. Many of you plugged in. She invited us to plug in to the June and I got 
really solid, amazing reviews um, from our area from that. So I told Janice, yep, I'll support and participate. It's a group of Sapphire Nationals. And so your people by July 10th can get into red and they get to be on that Zoom. You're gonna get the Zoom will be posted and you're only gonna give it to the people who qualify. And then once they attend as a red, the next month to come back, they have to add at least one new team member. So it gives you a deadline every single month, July through December, to get people into reds. And that could be a brand new person. Honestly, your newest, your new people will move the fastest. They'll get three people, you know, in and on so that they can be part of that. Um, wanted to circle back around to um, the once a month. I think you said you're doing the first Monday of the month for your unit million dollar mingo. So just pick a, you know, the first Monday, the first Tuesday, the first Wednesday that you do that. And I think you said you're doing that on your Facebook unit group or maybe stream yarding it in. I'm going to do that. On, I'm going to have that one on Zoom. And Zoom. Okay. Yeah. So that's in a Zoom. Um, I know Alden mentioned she's getting her trip director friends. And so I'm already reading some of your minds. Like I don't have trip director friends because I haven't been on a trip. It, uh, before I ever went on a trip, <laughs> yeah. I had people, I was doing a fall retreat myself yeah. as a director. And I remember, you know, myself and Shirley Jenkins, you know, we were just new Cadillac directors. We're like, all right, we're starting this fall retreat stuff ourselves. And so we just traded. I've done trades with directors that I know just geographically, people who adopted my people, et cetera, before I was a trip director that had nothing to do with it. Um, no one's a prophet in their own town. Yeah. So you don't need an accolade to make it more valuable. Any sales director has done way more than your consultants have. Otherwise, she'd be a sales director. Um, also, another, another thing about that, too, is sometimes because uh, I haven't had, you know, I've done the million dollar mingles. I haven't had, you know, my all my friends, you know, on them every single time. Sometimes it's been there's a consultant that's doing amazing things. Or she's actually, you know, doing what everybody's saying they want to do. And she's the spotlight speaker because they listen to them. Right. And it's one of one of them. So sometimes that's even more like believable than, you know, somebody that might be too far out of their realm or whatever. So it definitely doesn't have to be. Yeah. Well, and that's how you raise people up. Yep. And if you always use other people's people or other people versus your own, your people never raise up. They never get confident training. Yeah. And people always amaze me. Like sometimes the people that I think are going to do the best in presentation don't. And the ones that you're like, oh, I'm a little nervous about how this is going to go. She rocks it. Yeah. And so it allows you to see where people's gifts and talents are. Also too, it sounds like this is a once a month unit meeting. Yeah. This is your only non-guest event that you do yes. all month long. Yes. Yes. Which I think is wise. Okay. So yes, that is what I have come to because what I realized is in this virtual world, I was, you know, I continued having a weekly, you know, go a few years back or whatever. I don't even know with all the COVID stuff, but I realized that I was just doing what we did in person, which I had a weekly unit meeting week in, week out, no matter what in person. So I just switched that to zoom and did that. But what I realized was I didn't need to do that because we, I then had people all over the country. So I, again, was just doing something that, you know, I didn't necessarily need to be doing in person, obviously negating my other people around the country, but we needed to be in front of guests and at my unit meetings in person, we had skincare class. So the guests were with us for it, but then I went to a zoom and the guests weren't with us and I was training my consultants and why was I doing that when we could be doing a skincare class and I could be in front of guests? Um, and I realized like they really didn't need a whole lot more training. They just needed a whole lot more faces and a lot more activity. Um, so it was, you know, frustrating to me. Um, and I'm sure, you know, they thought it was great because we were just hanging out, but I just didn't want to hang out, you know, obviously. So that's why I then switched to just once a month. and. Uh, you know, the events that have guests at them, that is still training for them. But we're learning and earning at the same time versus taking up another weeknight time frame that they could be doing, you know, events with customers making money, 
getting recruits, um, I wasn't taking up more of that time. So that's how I came to the conclusion and realized that it needed to evolve. And so therefore it was the, you know, million dollar mingle first of the month is what I came to. Right. And then the other events that you're doing, you can plug guests into too. So when someone it has no consultants that are participating, you definitely don't need to be doing four unit meetings a month because you need to have something that you can have guests with if, it, if your unit meeting doesn't have guests. A uh, product, you know, a purposeful product reason for them to bring people and the opportunity shared. You know, product and opportunity included with it. So, because um, otherwise you're never gonna grow again. That's when you put yourself in a management role and you're not out in the field doing your Queen's Court of Sales and your Queen's Court of Recruiting um, because of doing these meetings. And so, um, and again, the, you're hearing Alden's schedule as you're listening to this. Some of you do more in-person stuff. Some of you do more virtual stuff. Everyone has to figure out what that balance is. But when we say this is happening, whether it's virtual or in person, it's the purpose of it. So, you know, I, I love hearing Alden, you know, think through. All of us thought when we start to do our virtual business, okay, we're going to do exactly what we did in person and we're just transferring it. And a lot of that has been true. I've had great success with that with our area. Um, growing in the last three years, but there are some things that don't make sense, um, but we still have to get the purpose of them, but the camaraderie, you know, now we can gather together four times a year, getting people to seminar, getting people to a fall retreat, you should already be on your date book, um, to uh, get your year in gear that you're doing, um, career conference the company's doing, and then back to seminar. So once a quarter, we gather in person and then virtually once a month as a unit. Um, and then I'll continue to do product preview guest events. So those will come out five times a year. We'll have area guest events. And again, learning while they're earning, they're always showcasing product and opportunity. So if you're a director that has no one that participates, you use that. You know, it's like when Debbie Moore came, oh my gosh, I was a dog with a bone. I was having 25 people in front of her, you know, because it didn't happen frequently. So, all right, let's talk about the events. How, what your, is your event rhythm during the month? Yeah. So with these events, I, again, went back to like when things were rocking and rolling and going how I want and want more of, you know, what did that look like? And it looked like my schedule was the same week in and week out without fail. There was always, you know, a skincare class going on, a glamour event going on, some kind of guest draw event going on, because that was new people plugging, you know, customers into that was consultants that want to move up a career path, seasoned people, it gave them a place to plug people into. So again, that was what I used to do at our studio in person. And so this took that place and I have, you know, figured out based on trial and error, like what I am most comfortable with, what I like best. So for me, I love having my office send out samples. I love it, how it's tangible to me, you know, having the expense of the samples that I handle versus putting that on my consultants and thinking they're going to handle it, whatever it might be. I have felt that that has worked best for me. And I like that. Some people do all straight QVC style. They're doing the products themselves, whatever it is. It's figuring out what works for you, where you're working in your sweet spot and rolling with it. Um, I think that's something that has been really helpful for me in the last couple of years, especially when we've had really big growth is that I've just been so focused on what works well for me and staying in my zone. This is what my, you know, I know I need to do. This is what I'm called to do. This is what my gift set is. So let's just do more of it, right? Um, so for me, mine's, you know, doing one, at least one skincare class a week live. So for me, they're going to be on Thursday nights and I'm going to have them go into our Facebook group and YouTube. The reason that I'm doing, I, I use StreamYard, but the reason that I'm doing that is because I don't want to neglect people that are on Facebook. I would not be on Facebook if I didn't run private groups for my business building. Looks like I might have died a while ago and I'm fine with it. Um, so that that's just how I operate and that's just who I am. 
So I know there's other people like that. I know there's a lot of people that aren't on Facebook and I want them. I want them. So the YouTube link, um, the ability with StreamYard to be able to do a YouTube link so that I can have people plug in from Facebook and YouTube at the exact same time is, you know, key. So that's something that's the method behind that madness. Um, and I, so skincare, every Thursday we're going to do, and I'm going to rotate between repair and 3D or, you know, repair and whatever other skincare. Um, and then glamour events. I love color. Um, and I know it's a great draw. So I have decided that I'm going to do one big glamour clinic a month. That's always going to be on the third. I chose the third Sunday for me, just for my schedule. And the reason that I, I, and I did find that I am going to send samples with it and have it be fun. And I'm going to customize looks and have it be themed and just have it as another layer. And you guys, the reason that I like doing this is because our consultants don't wear enough makeup, number one. And normally that's the number one thing that consultants ask questions about. They feel intimidated by, they don't even offer, you know, color appointments to people because they don't feel confident themselves. So this gets consultants on more products as well, but also it gives another layer. So if we have, it gives me the ability to help rebook people. So if they're coming to our, you know, our regular Thursday skincare classes, it's really easy to re-invite them back to a color class. So I'm layering people in products and they're also attached to their consultant and attached to, you know, our unit, our groups, all of that, because they're coming back with more color, but also color is a great draw. You can get a ton of guests with color. So that's something that I'm doing. Um, and I'm starting with, you know, once a week skincare classes and once a month color, but I am predicting that I will jump these numbers up as needed. Cause I can say, you know, when we were finishing our first trip, I was doing way more of these a week because we had a ton of people going through all of these, um, each week. So it will, you know, it'll evolve, but I wanted to have a place to start. So I encourage that people just pick something, like start with something, but also you guys, it takes about two or three months of consistent day in, day out, having the systems in place, honestly, for half of our consultants to even pay attention that we're doing it, but also, you know, for new people to catch on, for it to, for you to start seeing the momentum of it. And that's something that I think is key too, with these systems is rolling them out long enough and putting enough numbers through the systems before you start changing things and, you know, flip-flopping around and all of that. So that's something that I think is, you know, really important. And I am very like all naturally very ADD and all over the place. So that's something that I have to really, you know, stay on task with and know like, okay, I need to, you know, evaluate probably every 90 days, but I also have to track the numbers that are going through it because that's, the most important part as well, um, to know the, you know, efficiency of all of these things. So I have the glamour, I have the, um, skincare classes, but I also have it already pre-figured out how I'm following up with all of these people, how I'm turning them into, you know, practice interviews for consultants, for us, for our unit. So I'm really working this full circle, Versus just putting a whole bunch of information out there and, you know, doing all these faces, but not getting those results. So really closing the net, which I think having systems in place for how we're following up with them is key, especially in this virtual world. So that's something that I know that I needed to tweak for myself and for my unit is uh, we're doing, we, we're doing the numbers sometimes, but the um, fallout, there's a lot of people falling through our net. So we need closer little nets, <laughs> um, little holes, <laughs> like the yeah. holes need to be smaller in my nets yeah. um, because it can be frustrating going through a lot of numbers, but not seeing the results that maybe we used to. So that was something that I needed to figure out. So having those, you know, systems in place for how to follow up, um, and have those, you know, really sharpened and following through with those every single time was key. Well, and that's no different than when we did just meetings in person. 
I mean, as a director, I did ticket marketing at the end, questions. So I wanted to see who would ask me questions, just like at a party. I always had my own guest. My goal was always to have my guests. So my sales at my meetings paid for all my business expenses um, of meetings. And I had guest registration. So I had the guest phone numbers to follow up with. I would offer them if people could stay an extra 15 minutes. Um, I would give them a gift myself. Um, if not, I had their number and my goal, I was a dog with a bone to get a hold of the people on the phone, not text them, not, you know, Facebook message them, talk to them. Um, and actually I'd tell them, you know, part of your consultant's training is that I'm going to follow up with you. So if you're doing it vir virtually, you have a Google form that you're getting information and you're following up with that person the next day, if not that night. Because you guys, the longer the windows are, whether it was in person or virtually, that you plant the seed and they're like, this was fun. I like these women. Oh, they just, you know, I, I would buy this stuff. I, they're making money. Like I, I need some extra money. But you guys, they go to sleep. They talk to their husband. They go to work. They talk to a coworker. They say, I'm thinking of doing Mary Kay. You have no idea what their experience with Mary Kay is. And you lose her because the net was, the holes were too big. So um, the, I'm hearing five guest events, one a week skincare class. And also these skincare classes are guests. They're just like your success meeting. A skincare class at a success meeting live was always different than what someone did in the field. So at my studio, I always had every Saturday, a skincare class going on um, that was done as it's done out in the field. Well, now the virtual piece, they can go to my YouTube channel and watch a skincare class, 3D repair and color as it's done out in the field with all the tools on my website under everything skincare class. So you can use all your events to be guest events. And then if, as you have skincare classes, in addition to these things, you can invite your key people who are moving up, come into this Zoom room, come to this Facebook, see this I'll post my party, you know, be a guest in it. However, you're doing that skincare class live, pop her in the car, take her with you. You know, take, those are the people you're taking with you. The ones that are playing ball, the ones that are returning your calls, the ones that are answering, you know, your messages and they're progressing through the training packet. Um, but this allows a system that five events a month, how many, you know, out of your, gosh, if you had 10 at each, that's 50. That's team 50 right there for yourself. That's a great goal. Okay, so we've hit on training. How are you doing training in unit meetings? Um, your events um, that are putting you in front of people who are your consultants and also so that you're earning while they're learning. New consultant system. Um, and then uh, your monthly promotion and unit size. Last two things to talk about. So um, monthly unit promotion. So again, I have an assistant that handles all of this. And um, previously I would, you know, have at certain levels, they got, you know, certain prizes. And so I don't know, it was a couple of months ago that we started brainstorming because mm -hmm. when there's months that new product comes out, like July, directors can order new products. So I always in my career have promoted those products. I've kept them secret. They have little things blacked out over them. I'm not spoiling all that stuff, but they know that they can earn new products. So they're getting them before they can order them. So there's strategy there so that they can, you know, be using them, raving about them, have experience with them, and then be selling them to their customers right when they can order them. So I've always done that. But the other months I was doing, you know, fun, fun prizes, you know, jewelry, all the things that we do. Um, but then I realized also quite swiftly, I, I think, I don't even know. I think it, the brainstorming started, I think I had heard at, um, a lunch, I think it was a lunch and learn at leadership conference, um, for, I think it was half million and above or previous trip directors or whatever it was that a trip director was saying that treating her consultants as customers made a really huge difference in the amount that her consultants were ordering, which, duh. But that was like a, oh, wow, kind of thought in my mind of, I don't think I'm really treating all of my consultants like my customers, as far as educating them on products or 
you know, sharing about different products or whatever it might be the same in the same capacity that I would a customer. And then I know that my consultants aren't doing the same for their, you know, customers as well. So what I thought of was how about, because there's products like, for instance, the naturally stick, like I probably have 10 open in my house floating around at this current moment. And we're all good with it. Like everybody's using the naturally stick. My family swears by it. There's consultants that don't even know that we have a naturally stick. So I thought, how about instead of just on those special launch months, how about every month I do product gifts? I mean, I love that the company gives the great start qualified bonuses because selling a product that you got for free and making hundred percent profit sounds real nice. Like does hundred percent sound better to you or 50%? obviously hundred percent. So I am doing product gifts for my unit. And then as we brainstormed, we kind of went a little past that and I'm going to choose the products, you know, based on the um, 50% off deal, monthly deal, excuse me, monthly deal special that is made up that I'm sure many of you know and have seen. So I'm going to choose, we know ahead of time, you know, what those monthly deals are going to be. I'm going to choose a product off that sheet. And so what I'm going to do is say it's the naturally stick. I would make a, I'm going to make a video about, you know, a little commercial video, why I love this product, why you need this product, who's going to use this product, the re, the full retail price of the product, all of that, like a little product commercial of that that's generic, that's going to go to my customers because you guys, I'm realizing I, I need help. I, I don't think I treat my customers as great as I would want to be treated. I, I love customer service. Don't get me wrong. They're not neglected, but I can be better. I can do better. I can be in front of them more, right? As probably all of us could, but having this system in place is going to force me to do this. So I'm going to make that little commercial and I'm going to have it in a shareable link so that it goes to all of my consultants and they have permission and will know how to copy and paste it and share it to all of their customers. And it's gonna be on that 50% off deal sheet so that when they're reaching out to their customers for you know orders, whatever, the, that product is one of the ones that when they spend $50 retail, they can get at that half price, you know, price. So it's gonna help them with sales as well. And so I have chosen the different amounts that I'm going to do. And you guys can choose whatever amounts you want, obviously. But for the month, somebody who orders 400 wholesale is going to get a product gift from me. The reason I chose 400 wholesale is I've heard Kathy Hulu and Kristen Sharp talk about the Fortune 400 endlessly. And I've done nothing with it. And I don't know why, because I would love, you know, their million dollar units, their accolades, their career. So I'm going to listen to them. <laughs> and the reason being is the four, they called it the fortune 400 club, because it gets people doing more than the minimum, more than 225. But it's that group of people that are never going to be the 600, a thousand plus, plus, plus people. But if we can get them at that 400 amount, you guys, 225 to 400 makes a really big difference. Think about if you have 10 people doing that, like that changes the base production that you have. So the $400 a month is going to be my minimum level to get gifts. And then 600 by the 15th. I'm not giving gifts to somebody for a 600. They're getting gifts from the company. I don't believe in double promoting things. So 600 by the 15th strategically, because if they do a 600 by the 15th, they can double or plus by the end of the month. But also we are paid, you know, when you have a certain amount by the 15th. And I don't know about you guys, does one commission check a month or two commission checks a month sound better to you? I'm on the side of, I want two commission checks a month always. So really tracking how many orders go in by the 15th. So they get a gift with that. So if people do a 600 by the 15th and then their order up by the end of the month, they're getting more than one gift. And I'm fine with it because I'm getting paid twice on that, right? Two times. So that's the 600 and then $1,000 a month because that will jump people up from 600 to you know higher. Again, it's figuring out how to promote more wholesale, not giving gifts at the same levels that people always get gifts at. I'm figuring out these people, how I can get them to the next level. 
And then um, another one by the end of the month is 1700 because 1667 or whatever for court of sales, like let's just call it 1700. Um, so that's court of sales numbers. So I have people that do court of sales. I have people that aspire to be on the court of sales. So again, monthly tracking that. So obviously I'll pick products, give them multiples, whatever, I'll figure it out. But I will say the amount of money that's going to be spent in wholesale for these products is more then I would spend on earrings or a little purse or whatever, because I'm getting paid on my personal orders from the company. It's helping our unit wholesale, helping our unit retail. It's getting people on more products and it's helping them hopefully sell more products to their customers. So it's very strategic in that respect. Um, so I'm willing to invest more money than I would if I was just giving people some earrings or a purse or whatever it is. So that's the strategy behind that. And then also, you know, how I'm going to utilize that. And obviously it's going to force me to then, you know, educate my, my customers on more products as well and help them with their customers on products um, also. And again, I have an assistant, she's going to make the flyer each month. I'm just going to pick the product um, and she's going to manage it all. So people get reminders of how close they are away, you know, how far they are away, you know, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. You're you're almost to the next level. She's managing and handling all that stuff. So I don't do any of that. And then I have an assistant that's going to be here shipping all the products to the people too, telling them how excited we are and all of those things that handle all of that. So my hands will not be on those products either. So I love it. Number two, that's my unit too. I like that. 400 for the month, 600 by the 15th, 1,000 by month end, and 1,700 by month end. Yep. Perfect. So last but not least, my favorite topic, unit size. What's that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Just real quick. I realized, obviously we do a ton of shout outs. Most people have, you know, assistants that do things. Hopefully you do. If you haven't heard us say assistants 12 million times, I hope you can get that. Um, but um, I wanted to make sure, again, this was something I was kind of like, uh, well, I do. I very much remember a copying machine in her basement that was, as big as that was, yeah, as big as your desk. Yeah. Or bigger. Uh -huh. Massive. Uh -huh. And it was my job to help staple them. And then I hated this part, but I understand it. We had to highlight, like if it was going to Dawn, I had to find her name on every single page and highlight her name on that um, newsletter. 200, like five page newsletters. Oh, it was, uh huh. Yeah, a family business. <laughs> um, so we did that. And um, so I, you know, was thinking about that. My assistant, Diana, who obviously you guys know, she also has been around the game and sent out physical newsletters. And she said, you know, a few months ago, like, would you consider sending out some newsletters? And I'm like, no, mm -mm, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And I'm like, actually, I really like getting things in the mail that are not bills. Like, really, I, I love that. Um, so that also has made me, you know, realize to start writing more notes to people and kind of bring back the old school spirit of things, um, of true Mary Kay, you know, what we should be doing. And so I'm going to have a newsletter. It's not going to be as intense as that, but all it's going to have on it is the pieces that I want more of, right? So focusing on what I want more of. So mine's going to be about 600 people on target for princess and queen's court medalist and career path growth. And the people that are going to get it printed and a note from me are probably going to be like my top 10 or top 20 people, depending on, you know, unit size, what people are doing, all of that. It can ebb and flow. And then the rest is going to be posted in my Facebook unit group. Text it out too. Um, just so people are, again, I think this is helping uh, my hope my goal with this is that people are tracking things a little better um, than all this catch up on the other side and seeing, you know, how well they're doing in the process of things. But also I have realized that, I mean, seriously, you guys, last year when we were finishing our trip, I had people saying like, so what are we doing again? Like after I thought that I had said it so many times that I wanted to, I was annoying myself. Um, but people aren't paying as much attention as we think. So really truly being that chief reminding officer and having things in front of people is really helpful, but also I feel like it keeps me more accountable as well. 
when things are, you know, out front and you can see like, oh, wow, we are doing well. We are doing great. There's a lot of people in those categories or this list is really small and we need new people to fill them in. Um, so that's how I'm going to choose to kind of shake up the, the monthly recognition stuff. Okay. And, and that's what that means, the unit size, because we talked about the director uh, making sure she's doing port of sales, port of recruiting activity, and then the things that we shared um, with the unit growth. But if unit size isn't tracked, it doesn't happen. And all of you may want to look at where your unit size is the end of June compared to where it was the end of June last year, because I see most have less or the same. And so this is a game that if you do not track it daily, you do not win it. You don't win. And production follows people. And no matter how clear your vision is, how clear your yellow goals are, whatever's born and fostered and resurrected and confirmed at seminar, it's not going to happen unless the unit size is in direct proportion to it because it is going to be really hard to get 20 directors out of 24 unit members. <laughs> it just mathematically, like God can do miracles, but we are gonna do the natural versus, and let him do the supernatural. And you guys tracking unit size, I've taught it. If what Alden goes through is confusing in any way to you, go to my masters. I went through it. I recorded it because I've shared this again, ad nauseum in my career, but I will tell you, unless I can see a pad of paper with numbers on it that you could show me at any minute of any day, like a DIQ can show me, it's not happening. And you are decreasing. Management always will end up in decrease. It never ends up in growth. And that tracking is never gonna end up in growth. And so I'm incentivizing growth from July to December, because the fact of the matter is, we're delusional if we are saying we're going to be an inner circle area and if we're going to grow past this gold level, unless we have bigger unit sizes, it, it's not going to happen. It's just a fact of the matter. Doesn't, I, I mean, I think I'm pretty good at training. I have all the systems set up. <laughs> you know, the company has asked me to teach a seminar. I, I've taught internationally this year. Like I'm good at what I do, but if you don't have the numbers, it doesn't matter how good you are. So stop thinking that you're not a good director because you don't have the results. You don't have the people, period, the end. And if you don't trust me, get the people and then we'll have a conversation about it. But so far, no one has disproved me on this. So unit size, when you grow your unit by 25, 50, 75 or more, July 1st, so that'll be after the I3s that did an order in June fallout and you see your July unit size, not T's, your N's through um, I3s in July. Diana will make sure you all have that number. And then when you increase by December 25th or 31st, you can do it by Christmas though, do it whenever you want. Do it by Thanksgiving. Um, by at least 25, you're gonna get a custom piece of jewelry. You've seen um, some of me wear the B ring that you may not know has mustard seeds embedded all around it or the gorgeous um, piece of pearl earrings. And they have a, um, you'll see these at seminar. Um, you've seen me wear them a lot. They have a bumblebee on them. She does um, some bumblebee. Jan Thetford, who's a national, um, knows the designer. The pieces are absolutely stunning. They're, they're not inexpensive. They're not like you're giving away to your unit on a monthly promotion. And so I'm at that season of life that I'd rather give you more expensive things for doing the things that are of value versus a lot of stuff. Because you get a lot of stuff from Mary Kay now. And so um, these pieces, if you have 25 or 50 or 75, I mean, whichever level you're hitting or beyond, the, the pieces get more expensive and any new skyscraper director that debuts. So mustard seed jewelry, you can see all the pretty pieces online. You're going to see the flyer in July, but we are focusing on and recognizing unit growth because that a business is either growing or declining. There's no such thing. When people say I'm maintaining, it, it's a fallacy that you are um, delusional <laughs> and you're going to make yourself insane 
businesses are either growing or declining. There's no such thing as maintenance because as you know, people become T's, I3s turn into T's, unit sizes get smaller, they don't get bigger unless there's a leader out there driving the growth. So share with them your any unit size info you'd like to share. Yeah. Well, I think after this year with, you know, focusing on our six squares, one of them is unit size growth. So I'm sure all of us have had the swift realization of, oh, shoot, I'm not tracking this or not as well as I should. Or maybe you guys are great and you like did this wonderfully and you didn't get a text from your assistant that said, um, do you know how many T consultants you have? And I have a Cadillac size unit of T consultants that I was pretending didn't exist. So I got that and realized, oh no, this is not good. And we need to turn this ship around because that was a terrifying number. So we all, maybe you guys are better, but that was my come to Jesus moment. Um, and so I know for me, for my goals, I need a lot of unit growth in a short time frame to get the momentum back that I wish and desire and to get the momentum that I need moving forward for the goals that I have. So I know from July 1st through um, December 31st, I want to hit a unit size of 200. So to do that, if I you know average that out, we said it would be growing by 20 a month. But you guys, it's not just adding 20 new agreements a month because yeah, you know, the I's and T's start falling or the I's start falling off into T, which means they don't count anymore for your unit size. So say I have, you know, five I3's fall off. I technically would need 25 to show growth that month. So I have to replace those five that fall off and grow by 20. So I know really swiftly that I need great systems in place to try to keep those eyes coming back to active status. So I don't lose as many of those, you know, Cadillac unit mm -hmm. amount of T's. <laughs> I don't have that ever happen again. Again, this is a one and done. So having systems in place to get those, you know, consultants back to those status, which I think, again, you guys, treating your consultants like customers because really that group of people they are customers it's those personal use consultants so it's getting personal use consultants instead of ordering you know once or twice a year turning those making it our job like it is turning those into once every three month consultants and that's you know a part of what I'm hoping the you know method of educating them about more products and giving them the resources to educate their friends and family about the products as well will help boost up those numbers so that um, the nets are way smaller for that fall through. Yeah. So it's figuring out, you know, what you want your goal to be in the next six months and backing up, you know, how much new that means each month. So I know minimally my unit needs to bring in 20 new consultants minimum each month. But then I also know I need, te I need teas coming back to status. And there's going to be months that I need, you know, 20, 20, 25, 30 and more to make up the difference between the people that are falling through the cracks because it is attrition and it will happen. And there's no way you're getting 100% of your people back. I think a good goal is usually a third of your people, you know, retaining a third of your people back um, is, you know, a, a good goal for that. But that's the unit size tracking. And I'm pretty sure you have a whole YouTube training on it. Yeah, it's on my master's program, yeah. which master's, I highly suggest as a director that you review it, go back through master's program, do one a week, starting the first week of July. I mean, they're like less than an hour long. You can do them while you're walking on the treadmill. You know, if it's something that you need to go back and write notes, then, you know, so be it. But maybe, you know, there's an, a power partner. You guys have a similar goal. You're going for your Cadillac by Christmas or, um, you know, million or trip or whatever the case may be. Find someone. They don't have to be in our area, you guys. They can be other people. I have lots of directors all over the nation that's using the master's program. And you do one a week and then, you know, 
each watch it on your own and then discuss it. Be on Voxer together. It doesn't have to be a set appointment. You guys can do it on Voxer back and forth. How am I applying this? How am I doing with this? With the master's program, there's a whole unit tracking section on there. Um, when we're talking about the treating your personal use consultants as customers, I always, um, as a consultant, I would do an open house every new product launch and they'd come with my customers to try the new products, see the new products. As a national during this virtual time, prior to this, I did it at my success meeting. And now I do our product preview guest event. And so it is QVC style. So all your unit, like, you know, you want prospects on there, you want your customers on there, but you want your consultants on there, you know, maybe give them a gift for being on each of the product preview guest events, um, because they're going to learn, they're going to stay in the pink bubble, they're going to get excited. And you guys, you never know when someone's going to change their mind or life is going to change their mind for them. Um, but if you had just a third of those people, you know, ordering because they get excited about the new products, that's huge. And it's retention because those are the people that fall off. And if you don't have systems to stay in front of them, they recruit with someone else. And I hate that. You know, I have huge retention in my unit and always have because I've always made, like Mary Kay said, everyone has a sign around their necks. They make me feel important. And so how can you make those people? And again, you know, I see people going, okay, I'm going to focus on getting all my T's, but oh yeah, I didn't do any faces and I didn't get any recruits. It's like, stop the madness. It's both. Like, I want you to listen to all this information. And then I want you to not start talking to someone else about it because her lane is different than your lane. You know, you've heard from Alden's lane. You're hearing mine from like a 30,000 foot view. I need you to listen to this and put your strategy together for the first 90 to 180 days of this seminar year so that next year at this time, you're where you want to be. That's how the best is yet to come is going to happen. You guys, the systems are set up. I'm excited about participating in this red event. I'm excited about our unit growth and awarding you with this gorgeous jewelry when we're in Fort Worth, um, Texas for leadership conference in January. Dates are already set, mark your calendar. Your people who are working to be directors, have them mark their calendar and protect it from vacations and work conflicts. You have the master's program. We have our teams, the 30, the 50, the 100 to track your activity. Um, we have coaching calls that I do. I'm going to continue that for those medalists. And as soon as they get the three agreements in, your job as a director is say, text your national, text on, here's her private cell number, text her, set it up. I love when I can talk to people before month end so I can help turn that bronze medal into a gold medal and on target power or DIQ. Also, when your new consultants start their business with an 1800 wholesale, they start with a star, which you guys, that's like a quarter of full inventory. You know, it's, it's nothing anymore. It's five roll-up bags, but that shows me that she's being coachable. She was resourceful and gritty to either sell it or find the money for it one way or another. She's trusting us enough in that, that I want to invest time in her on the front end with the coaching call. Again, give her my cell number, all of the new consultants agreements that go in the first week of the next month, get our new consultant huddle from me. And then they get a gift when they text me answers to questions that I ask. And I personally send a thank you note um, and I'm, I'm conversing with them. Um, again, it's a way for me to see as a national, where do I invest my time? What are the soil conditions there? Um, the fall retreats, I'm gonna be in Michigan and I'm gonna be in Georgia. And so at those retreats that covers all our leadership team and our people can all get to those two different locations um, for fall retreats. And then I am gonna be investing my time with DIQs and directors at those retreats instead of doing a separate leadership retreat. That is what makes sense for this season um, of our area and our business. So you can get those dates soon. They are hot off the press. And seminar, last but not least, you guys, People can register on site. And so we do not stop selling seminar until you are on that airplane on the 21st or 22nd of July this year. I've had people sign up in July and come to seminar and it 
rock their world and change their life. You know, let's not limit God that, oh, they didn't make it by the July 1st registration and you're just satisfied with the people that you have. We can always find a place for them to sleep. We can always, you know, always, we can always accommodate the person. Your job is to be out there in the field and to find the new people that are going to be with us at our area night, 60th anniversary at Mary Kay Corporate that I will not be doing next year. Our director's meeting our, with our um, legacy area, the more Hulu area, and the breakfast after awards night. You guys, don't presume that things are going to be done the same every single year because those days are done. And we're in our final four. This is, you know, four more seminars after this. And so they are going to be done very strategically to make sure that I am best supporting the growth for Mary Kay culture warriors and leaders so that when I leave Mary Kay, it's stronger and better. That is my best thank you to this opportunity and this company and this Mary Kay family for everything that this business has ushered into my family's life. Um, you know, financially, flexibility wise, and for eternity. So you guys, I hope that this is helpful for you. I am looking forward to each one of you individually um, messaging me, um, and we will then get going on tweaking your strategy. But what you heard, Alden came to me with the bones of that. And so now you have the bones to get that in your brain. If that's not how your brain normally works, figure out those different categories according to what is going to get you to where you want to be when we're together at leadership and uh, we'll have an individualized conversation. Okay. Thank you all in for doing that. Probably time to go feed steel. Okay. All right, you guys. Thank you. Happy new year.